Hello, hello, hello. DM Geezer Jim here, finishing out the chapter five of the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide as we continue our RT Operation RTFM. Read the frickin' manual. Frickin' manuals. Uh, we're almost done with five, so let's get to it. Chapter five, ending a campaign. A campaign's ending should conclude the last of the major conflicts and tie up most of the threads of its beginning and middle. It's okay to leave some loose ends for characters to explore in the next campaign. You don't have to take a campaign all the way to level 20 for it to be satisfying. Wrap up the campaign whenever the story reaches its natural conclusion. Allow time near the end of your campaign for the characters to finish up any personal goals. The stories need to end in a satisfying way just as the campaign story does. Ideally, some of the characters' individual goals will be fulfilled by the final adventure. Give characters with unfinished goals a chance to finish them before the very end. Once your campaign is ended, a new one can begin. If you intend to run a new campaign for the same group of players in the same setting, using their previous characters' actions as the basis for Legends is one way to invest your players in the new campaign. Let the new characters experience how the world has changed because of the actions or accomplishments of the previous campaign's characters. In the end, though, the new campaign is a new story with new protagonists. They shouldn't have to share the spotlight with the heroes of days gone by. Ending sooner than expected. This is a short section, isn't it? Uh, ending sooner than expected. Sometimes you run out of ideas for your campaign, or it gets so sidetracked that you have no idea how to bring it to a satisfying conclusion. You might just not feel excited about it anymore, or you might be so excited with ideas for a new campaign that you can't focus on the current one. Any of these might signal the end of your campaign. The best way forward when you want to end a campaign is to talk to your players about it. If you're not excited about the game anymore, it's quite possible that they're not either, and you can change or end the campaign to everyone's satisfaction. Consider the following possibilities. Player input. If you're running out of ideas for your campaign, your players might be more than happy to supply you with some. Find out what they'd like to have happen in the cam if the campaign continues. They might give you all the inspiration you need. Switch DMs. One of your players might have so many ideas about the future of the campaign that they're willing to take over as the DM. You can either take over that, player character's, that player's character or make a new one of your own. Let go of your plans for where the story was going and allow the new DM to have creative control. Transport the characters. If you or another DM wants to start up a campaign in a new setting if the players don't want to make new characters, consider having the tr characters travel through a portal to a new world. Arrange a grand finale. Sometimes, to end, sometimes an end to the campaign is the right answer. Look for ways to end the campaign with a bang, even if it's earlier than you originally planned. Flip through your campaign journal to see if there are forgotten elements you can resurface for one last hurrah. That's it. That's our section on ending a campaign. It took us all of three or four minutes uh, to, to read through it. Not a lot here, so you get to suffer through some comments for this last part. So I do want to try to wrap everything in step uh, chapter five uh, into a neat little bundle here with my, my closing comments. Okay, before we go too far, ending a campaign. Earlier in our campaign, it started talked about knowing how long your campaign was going to go. Uh, and now we're talking about it's okay for the campaign to end at, uh, at a certain point. And it's both, both can be true. When you are planning your campaign out, you should have an idea of where it's going. But if your players do certain things, make certain choices, um, do a lot of side stuff, they may end up being higher level than you anticipated. Or they may have shortcutted the adventure, uh, found, a, found a, an easier way to solve the problem, and instead of playing to level 18, they're able to solve the campaign at level 12. That's okay. Just because you planned on playing to 18 doesn't mean you have to. Okay. If you planned on them wrapping it up at level 12 and they got into a bunch of side stuff and it looks like it's not going to be till level 16 before, we fin before they finish, that's okay too. The idea was we planned an ending. We, we thought of an ideal point, but because a, a campaign is a living, breathing thing that responds to our players' choices and inputs, our plan may not necessarily hold up to the reality, Okay. One of the big things here is talking about giving the personal goals. While you may have had Save the World from Tiamat as the overarching story from your, 
from your campaign thread and your campaign plot, remember the start was going to have our players um, uh, understanding their goals. What does each player have as a goal? What is their ambition, right? So when we end a campaign, we should also be resolving some of those goals and at least one or two of their overall ambitions. That's part of planning for the end of a campaign. All of this stuff runs together into this, okay? Um, beginning a new one. When the thing that's super important about this is, and this is something I see a lot of new DMs and new playgroups, uh, they end up doing, and it, it ends up hurting their second campaign. They had so much fun with their first campaign that all of the stars of the first campaign become the driving NPCs of the second campaign. But there's so much uh, love, if you will, that's built into the survivors of the first campaign that the second group always struggles in the shadows of the, of the, of the original NPCs. The original NPCs have a tendency to show up and solve the problems for the second group. So please, 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 if you are going to use previous adventurers as NPCs in your setting, make sure to limit their impact. Because if they are such badasses that they can solve all the characters' problems, why are we going forward with a new group of characters? Why not just pull the old gang out of retirement and solve the problems? There's a lot of questions, a lot of comments that come with that, but keep that in mind. The NPC should be retired into the background. We can pay homage to him. We can say, "Hey, man, there's a statue of you in the group, uh, in the in the in the in the fucking courtyard. Yay to you!" But your new heroes, your current group of characters, are the heroes of the story. Don't want them operating in the shadows of the last group. Be careful with that. I'm telling you, that's something a lot of new groups suffer with. And the first campaign was super badass, and the second campaign sucked. Why? Because the second campaign was only existing in the shadows of the first campaign's groups. You can't do that. Ending sooner than expected. This is important to be aware of as a GM because it happens a lot, okay? First and foremost, real life is the killer of most campaigns. Schedules change, jobs change, kids are born, people move. So many things can happen that can end a campaign sooner than it needs to. And you've got no control over that. What this section is talking about is you, me and you, the GMs. We want to end the campaign. It wasn't life that ended it. It wasn't a schedule change that ended it. It's whether you're frustrated, you're bored, you're distracted, you're whatever. But you are getting to the point where you're not into this campaign. And this statement here is the best way forward when you want to end a campaign is to talk to your players about it. If you're not excited about the game anymore, it's quite possible that they're not either. There is a lot of truth to that. Your players will read off of your energy. They will read off of your, your body language. If you aren't, okay, damn, are we ever going to wrap this up? Your players will be like, I know, right? Okay, here we are for the eighth session in this freaking dungeon that should have taken two sessions, but let's go. Gosh, I know we suck. I'm sorry. Those little things that you're doing that, that you're portraying to your party, they're going to feed off of. And that can also include being bored of a campaign. So this is great advice. Talk to your players, man. We're not here to waste each other's time. A lot of times the players are only playing with the campaign because they think you're still into it. And if you haven't been into it in two months, they haven't been into it in a month and a half. But they're hoping that there's a plan. They're doing it. Have a chat with them, man. It's okay. It's okay to not finish every campaign. It's okay to not finish it. If, if you guys aren't having fun, then don't do it. Because never forget, I'm going to go to big face for this as I finish out the chapter. Everything that we are reading about in the 2024 Dungeon Master's Guide and before the 2024 and in the next year, in, in the next 50 years, D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, is a game. It's supposed to be something we're doing for fun, okay? If you're running an adventure that's not fun, you need to stop. If you're digging yourself into a campaign that is more frustrating than it is rewarding, you need to stop. Because if you're not having fun as a DM, your players are not going to have fun as much fun as players. You might be really good at hiding it, but eventually they're going to sniff through your bullshit, okay? This is something that we all do for fun, players and GMs alike. When you get to the point where you're not having fun with it, you need to step away. You really need to step away. And I'm not saying quit being a DM, but it might be time to go ahead and put a pin in that campaign. Hey guys, we tried. We, 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 we worked hard at it. And there were some really cool moments in it, but ultimately it just kind of feels flat. It kind of feels forced. Kind of feels like I'm dragging you guys through this story. 
Uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pause and, and start a new campaign. Let's let's do something different. Something that sounds more fun. Because you're playing a game to enjoy time with your friends and family, ideally, to build a shared experience together. Everyone at the table, especially you as the DM, needs to be having fun and needs to be involved in the process. So if you need to end a campaign because it's flat so you can do a better campaign, do it. Don't keep that shit on life support for, support for four months just to end anyway. Because that was four months that you could have been having fun in a new campaign. Okay? But there is a flip side to this. If you're playing with friends and family, you have a regular play group and you start a new campaign every three months and never finish it, they're going to get frustrated with it. You will lose players because the players want to see the epic conclusion someday. And if every two months, hey man, I'm, let's kill this campaign because they got an, an idea for another one that's going to be even better. But what about our characters? Because your character, your players are invested in their characters. Your players have built backstories. They've built connections. They've built relationships with these NPCs. They've bought into your world. And now you're going to rip that world from underneath their, th their, their feet, throw it away, and make them start an, an, over in a new world every time you get a new idea for a campaign. That is not healthy gameplay for your group either. Okay? you got to find a balance in there. Try to see things through to the end. Try to see things through to a conclusion. But if they're not fun, then step away from it. But the flip side of that is bailing on every campaign after 10 sessions, not a good look either, man. Your players ain't going to take shit that you're doing serious. So find your balance there. All right, but that's it, man. Chapter 5 was pretty good stuff. Overall, just reiterated Chapter 4, took the tools that we learned in 3 and 4 and expanded on the ideas that were presented there to show us that we can use the same basic methodology that we used for an encounter to design an adventure. We use the same thing that we designed for an adventure to design a campaign. And once we get our campaign set up, we get to start looking at designing worlds, designing settings to support the campaign ideas in case one of the settings that exists doesn't do it. So that'll be getting into that pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, this is the end of chapter five. This is the end of our video. Chapter five, creating campaigns, ending campaign, and ending a chapter with some comments. Thank you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for continuing along with this thing. If you're new to it, push like, follow, subscribe. Jump in, it's chapter one. We are It's a full-blown audio book with a little bit of commentary. Um, appreciate you, man. Likes, follow, subscribes. Join us over on, on, on Twitch. If you really want to help a brother out, hit me up on Patreon. Anything we can do to keep him in business is good. But more importantly, come back for our next episode. We'll be starting chapter six soon. Thank you for your time. You guys take care.